and welcome back to iProperty Radio with myself, Carol Tallon. You can contact us on social media at iProperty Radio or email hello at iPropertyRadio.com. In the PropTech hot seat today, I'm joined by Olivia Bush, CEO of Flowforma. Olivia, you're very welcome. I'm delighted you were able to join us today. Morning, Carol. Thanks for having me. It's great to uh, be here. Well, I, I'm excited because Flowforma has been um, in the news quite a lot over the past week uh, and there has been an announcement which we're definitely going to get on to. Um, but maybe we'll take a step back and for people who might not be familiar, you might just explain what Flowforma is and the offering. Yeah, so Flowforma is a process automation tool, a digital process automation tool. So in language, as I would explain it to my kids, is we automate your processes. So if you have paper processes or lots of things that you manage in Excel or through Outlook, we'll take all those and streamline them and put them into a system. So you won't have the paper anymore. We'll get automated tasks when you have to do stuff that will show you what stage of the process you're at. So simply putting, we automate your paper processes or manual processes. Very good. And I first um, became familiar with Flowforma through the National Construction Summit and uh, there were members of your team and, I, and Rebecca actually took the time to go through and explain the process of what you guys do, because I, I think what's what's particularly interesting here is the no code element. So you might just, for the construction industry, I know there's a, a particular offering. So you might just take us through that because the no code element, I think, is particularly appealing to the construction audience. Yeah, so um, we have a construction accelerator. So we have pre-built um, processes for construction. So construction would be one of the industries with a lot of traction in because it would have repeatable processes, you know, that need every construction company needs. Um, so the examples would be things like materials requisition or inspection requests, site visit requests, permits to dig, all of those type of things. So we would have pre-built processes for those. And as you rightly said, the unique thing about Flowforma is that it's no code, which means that it's for business users. So non-technical people, and I put myself in that bracket, Carol, could roll the two light. We have had examples where um, customers have had interns, business interns, not technical interns, roll the two light for them. So it's a logical approach um, that doesn't require you to have any IT development skills. You don't have to code. So, you know, we've got lots of people like HR managers, finance managers, finance directors, the process owners, so the people who actually know the process best can get on with it and roll the tool out without waiting on IT. I mean, I'm sure we've all had experience. I'm a marketeer by trade, so I've been in technology marketing for over 30 years. Um, and I remember the days, I'm old enough to remember, Carol, whenever you needed one little change on your website and you had to go to IT. And they had a big priority list. It was, you know, understandable, but you weren't top of their list. Whereas now you've got content management tools, you can do all your changes yourself in site on in, in house, and we can change things on our website straight away. So it's quite similar to that. It allows the process owner to get up and running. Um, it's trusted by IT, and a lot of IT departments welcome a tool such as ours because it reduces the dependency on them and it helps make more people across the business self-sufficient. Yeah, which obviously um, is the aim. Technology should absolutely be making things simpler. It shouldn't be making it more um, more complicated. And I think that actually there was an exclusionary nature around technology. If you look back 20, 30 decades or 20, 30 years ago, that maybe wasn't there today. And um, it's interesting to say that your, your background is coming from um, technology marketing because marketing to an industry like construction is, is a little bit different in so far as it's... Um, you know, traditionally, it has been a much slower um, industry to embrace technology. So how have you found that experience? Yeah, I mean, I've worked in technology marketing, and I suppose I've become quite unique in that because marketers tend to jump up white industries, but I was working in BPM, ECM, document management, so always stayed in technology. But we find now that construction, I think, have realised that they need to welcome new technology. Now, we were seeing that, Carol, even pre-COVID. So before COVID, we were already getting a lot of traction in construction because they had realized that they need to start to digital transform 
and um, they need to start looking at their tools and they're a little bit behind most of the other industries and um, when it comes to tools such as ours such as digital still have a lot of paper-based processes they still have a lot of people out on site that work on paper um, whereas we have a mobile tool that allows them so they won't have to have paper out on site and you know they can record the results instantly and it's straight back so I find them very welcoming I think the timing you know obviously it was very important but as I say pre-COVID we started to see traction in construction and really COVID has just acted as a catalyst for tools such as ours um, because hybrid working is a necessity now paper yeah. processes are broken um, and I think also when people work from home for the first time and I know during COVID a lot of people were working from home that haven't worked from home before they need structure in their day and a tool such as ours a process automation tool allows you to have structure in your day it organizes your tasks for you it tells you what needs done when and a lot of home workers have welcomed that kind of structure so i think it's that um and also i think then we all know there's a global shortage of it resources at the moment and um, it's very hard to get it people and also if you do they're very expensive so our tool allows you to be self-sufficient and not have to go out and pay for those expensive it resources yeah that's a that's a great point and you're definitely not the first um ceo of a of a construction technology group to sit in the prop tech hot seat there and talk about the impact of COVID in terms of accelerating adoption. But you make a great point and one that's sometimes overlooked that actually the industry, while it's often criticised, um, it was absolutely taking steps towards uh, digital transformation prior to COVID, but COVID certainly accelerated. And maybe um, I, I think maybe COVID established the business case for it when um, that remote working needed to be facilitated. Um, but in terms of the skill shortage, we talk so often about the skill shortage in construction that sometimes, again, it's overlooked that they tend to be um, engineering. And we forget that actually they, there's an increased need for skills in technology, in construction, and that's also, also a skill um, that, that's in short supply at the moment. So how is that impacting not just uh, your clients, but also your own business? Yeah, I mean, there's an IT shortage across industries. It's not just construction. And um, we're actually recruiting for the R&D department at the moment, and it's been extremely difficult to find one people with the skill set and two people that you can afford. Like we're a small company as well, Carol, with 30 people. Um, and because there's such a shortage in demand, these people are very expensive. So I think that's what all companies across all industries are struggling with at the moment. It's getting the people and then it's maintaining them and keeping them um, because it's such a competitive market and there's such a demand. You know, outside of the skills shortage, one of the other uh, resources that is really under pressure within construction at the moment, um, you know, certainly when we look at materials, it feels like the construction industry has just been really hammered. And I know many industries will, will have felt the same, but I mean, they were only getting into a rhythm of recovery um, before Brexit kicked in and then you know, before we were able to fully understand the impacts of Brexit with COVID and the unpredictable and the uncertainty around COVID. Um, just as we thought we were coming out of that, we uh, there was the outbreak of war in Ukraine. And, you know, so essentially every, every, every element of the business of delivering construction has, has come under fire. Um, so in so I can see, by the way, in terms of the tiny margins that are involved in construction, I can see why anything that that simplifies, anything that makes things more efficient and can be done um, with a reduced staff would be of benefit. But because the margins are, t are so tight, there's generally not a good appetite for trying new things unless they're fairly well tested. So how are you finding um, getting into construction companies maybe where they haven't gone far along that journey of digital transformation? Do they see this as an expense or a, a resource to be used? Yeah, I think you get mixed reactions. Um, but we have a lot of um, customer case studies and referrals, so I think that definitely helps. I do think they realize that they're having to do something now and automation tools, you know, for years have always been around increasing your operational efficiency. So 
I think people realize that. Um, so if you've got um, tight margins, I think operational, any tools that help your operational efficiencies, people are open to. So I think automation tools, people know do that. And they also help reduce the time you spend on manual tasks and the free everyone's time up to concentrate on their job at hand. So I think that's welcome. I do think people are still cautious. So I think people, it's still the unknown and automation tools is about, it's about process change and it's change within your business. And let's face it, Cara, we all don't like to change. We all like to just work the way that we know. So I think, you know, there has to be a mindset to embrace change throughout the business. COVID, Brexit, all of those things have definitely made people think more about change and realize that they're having to change the workforce shortage as well. So I think people are more open to change, um, but you do need to have referrals and references and use cases. And we're lucky we have plenty of those. And we have a lot of customers in the US markets. They're probably slightly further along the journey um, than we are in the UK and Ireland. So a lot of those customers will act as references and use cases, which is great. Um, and the lovely thing about construction as I said earlier, is it's a repeatable process. So some industries we work in, for example, for insurance, every time you go in, it would be a different solution. It wouldn't be repeatable across, but in construction, it's repeatable across construction companies. So, you know, every construction company needs an onboarding process. Onboarding and hiring and managing contractors is a big thing. You know, site visit requests, materials requisition, those are all common across lots of industries. So that makes it easier because we can share the knowledge across construction companies. And actually, in terms of that sharing knowledge, so I can see one of the things when we look at uh, or when we talk to um, AI companies, one, one of the issues and challenges that come across is the lack of accessible data in the across the construction industry here in Ireland that actually we haven't been good at generating data uh, and we're also not good at sharing it even in anonymized ways. So how are you collecting and maybe using that for the betterment of the industry yeah well our customers we're we're like a family business so we know our customers very well the analysts we work with Forrester analyst in London and they always joke and say nobody knows their customers like we do because we're so small and um, so we work as I say we've worked with our customer clients to create this construction accelerator which is eight or nine pre-built processes that we know are common across the industry and we work with our customers closely to get those created and they've shared what they're doing and we've been able to take that knowledge and pre-build these processes that will hopefully get other construction companies up and running faster on their digital transformation. Very good. Um, in terms of the, the construction accelerator and those kind of pre-built templates, do you integrate with, um, so for example, would you integrate with design tools or something like BIM? Um, modeling with your clients? Do you integrate uh, or right through to the other end of the spectrum, which would be kind of the accounts procedures and others? Yeah, and so we can integrate through the API integrations. Yeah. We do integrate with Procore and BIM is one that comes up as well. So there's a couple of ones that we see again and again that we integrate with. Um, and then we are a SharePoint add-on product. So we sit on top of SharePoint, which is used largely across the construction industry for document management as well. So, you know, that's the document management tool of choice for us. And um, so, yes, there's all of those integrations. I mean, process is always about integrating. Um, you always have to sit in the middle of, of different things with process. So we'd be very used to that scenario. Very good. And um, Olivia, I, I mentioned there at the top of the interview, Flowforma has been in the news over the past week. There's um, There's been some really positive developments. You might just take us through the, the latest news announcement. Yes, yeah, so we raised four million in investment there, Carol, and that is to enable our next stage of growth. So we're hoping to create 70 jobs in this new phase of growth and global expansion. So a large part of that is also focusing in on US construction market. Um, and we are working with Enterprise Ireland to open an incubator office in their New York uh, headquarters. So that's very exciting. And actually Rebecca that you spoke with is going to go out there for us and represent us initially in the US market. 
Oh, th that's so exciting. Congratulations. It's fantastic to hear because the company is not that long established. Um, so it, it, I, I know that um, this was essentially a, a spin out startup, um, but only since 2016. So that's a short amount of time, given the huge challenges uh, th that have been in place over that uh, over that few years. Yeah, we're really pleased. We're very excited. Um, we do have a lot of US customers already. So US customers and the UK would be our two biggest customer bases. And we have as many in the US as the UK, believe it or not. So because it's a SaaS based product, we've always been able to do a remote sell, but we felt that now it's time to take the next step and get some feet on the ground and do some networking. And as you mentioned, Rebecca is the perfect person for doing the networking. Fantastic, fantastic. And just in terms of, uh, I, I suppose, when you're looking at other jurisdictions, and, and I ask this question to, to most of the guests that we have on, particularly when they're operating in different jurisdictions, I'm always really interested to objectively find out where Ireland sits in terms of tech adoption, because I'm very conscious that I speak to people who are interested in innovation. I speak to companies who are who see the value of investing in tech. But when you're going into a new marketplace, um, how does the marketplace stack up or where does Ireland fit in terms of um, progress being made on, on digital transformation? Yeah, I think the US is ahead of the UK and Ireland. I mean, we saw that when we talked to customers in the US, they don't need educated as much. They already know a lot about digital transformation. They know about no code, low code tools. They know the benefits. So we're not really selling that. They're usually out assessing tools. Um, you know, there's one or a couple of our competitors in the running. Whereas in the UK and Ireland, we still have to educate people a little bit more as to what they're losing if they don't go no code or low code. So I think everyone in the UK and Ireland, all the com construction companies know that they need to digitize. But there still wouldn't be the same urgency as there maybe is in the US market. And um, we've just brought out a new proof of value workshop, which is an offering we have to help people understand that if they don't digitize, they are losing every day. I think because nothing breaks, Carol, people think it's not an urgency, but really if you sit down and you calculate the hours and the time and what that equates to in euros, you're losing a lot of money by not moving forward and you're getting behind your competitors. You know, uh, the getting behind is a really interesting one because one thing we've seen, and we've been talking about this even prior to COVID, that um, the gap between the companies who are doing this well, and particularly in the construction industry, the gap between those who are embracing technology and doing this well, and those who are almost belligerently um, ig ignoring what, what's really happening in the marketplace, the gap is widening to the extent that there would be concerns can the laggards ever catch up? You know, normally you would have this span of, you know, right from the early adopters to, to the laggards. But if that gap gets too wide, particularly what we're seeing at the moment with some very high profile insolvencies across UK construction, th that gap has, there's, there's arguably never been a more dangerous time to allow that gap develop between you and your competitors. Yeah, I'd agree. I think... With the economy now, you're right, it's a very dangerous time to, to let that go. You really do need to be embracing the new technology. And I think the way to do it is through the low code or no code tools. They're less expensive, you know, so Flowforma was created to bring business process management or automation to the masses. So for those companies that couldn't afford, you know, six or seven figure enterprise software, tools like ours were created. Um, it's a SaaS software, so, you know, it's easy in, opt out, opt in. Um, and I think companies are going to have to look to those kind of tools. You know, you get up and running much faster. So as you said, if they've left it and the gap's quite big, using low code or no code tools would help them close that gap quicker. Yeah, that, that's a really good point. And it's amazing. Prior to COVID, if you and I were having this conversation, we would talk about um, you know, the, the differences between the attitudes of those who are ready to embrace and, and those who aren't. And the biggest change has never been around the technology. It's always around the culture and making that mindset shift. But actually, COVID really acceler uh, accelerated that particular part of it because everybody had to get on board. You know, everybody was using Zoom for everything from 
engagement parties uh, and, and family announcements to, to important work. Absolutely. So actually, I, I think that the, the mindset, it's not even about the technology that, that was able to be employed over uh, the period of construction lockdowns. It was that that culture, that mindset that actually might have taken, I don't say a generation, but it might have taken another decade to get there. Suddenly we got there in a matter of under under 12 months. I and think I you're think right, because that's it came into every part and every aspect of people's lives. Yeah. So not just work. You know, as you say, it suddenly was how we lived day to day. Yeah, and that look, I, I think that's been a huge benefit to prop tech and construction technology innovators everywhere. So it's amazing to see this kind of uh, this kind of innovation coming out of Ireland and now spreading globally. So the very best of luck to your team as you head stateside and open the office over there. We look forward to hearing great things and congratulations on the latest funding round and growing your team. It's a really exciting development for any technology company and we're particularly delighted to see it across uh, the built environment because we know that that's where innovation is needed so congratulations and best of luck to your team that was Olivia Bush CEO of Flow Forma and that's it from us this week you can get in touch with the show on social media at iProperty Radio or email hello at iPropertyRadio.com my thanks to producer Breed Malloy and the Hear Me Roar uh, media production team and to Luke Delaney on sound for Dublin South FM. Until next time, thank you for listening.